hello everyone. Welcome to Recalling the Adventure, where we take our entrepreneurs back to where they began and recall how their adventures got started. Today we have with us the founder of MT Art Agency, Marine Tongi. She left the University of Warwick to join an art gallery in London. She founded an art gallery in Los Angeles at 23, and then she started MT Art Agency in 2015. And Marine, I'll let you fill in any further blanks if there are. I mean, there are many. Um, it's been it's a spectrum of 10 years, so there's definitely loads of things in between. But yeah, cool. So then I guess we'll find out more about those as and when we go along. So let's begin. So the first one is kind of like a challenge. So could you describe empty art agency in just three words? So we basically spot the most exciting talents in the arts and then make sure that they become usually successful. So either through sales of their works or public art projects in the cities or brand collaborations or also being on the cover of magazines or having loads of press. Um, but it's really exciting. It's being on the hunt for the most talented people and making sure that they get there. Okay, so if we had to bring that down to three words, what would those three words be? We always say invest in artists because that's what we do. We invest in artists. All right, cool. Awesome. So do you remember the exact moment that you got the idea for MT Art Agency or like thought you wanted to start your own agency? It's, um, like you said, I, I've been in the sector for 12 years. I started when I was um, 18 and I... I, you know, run my own, I directed a, a gallery when I was 21 and kind of saw how you could build the careers of visual artists. And from that basis on, I got really interested into this because I love two things. I, I love making sure that people can get there if they're talented, but I also love the idea that people could be really inspired um, by their art. So I think the two things were very connected for me. And so um, I got really lucky to then be offered um, to own my own gallery by investor in Los Angeles who had heard of, you know, the sales and the project and everything I was generating here. I think I was definitely um, one, of, I mean, not only the youngest, I think, gallery director, but I was also someone that was closing very large deals very young. Um, and I think that kind of got him attracted. And then that's why he invested in me to kind of open my own gallery in Los Angeles. And... When I was in Los Angeles, I got exposed to, you know, the top talent agency who built musicians, actors and sportives. And I thought that this would enable my talents to get a lot bigger because instead of just selling the artworks on walls, I could also do brand partnerships, public art press and media packaging. And I could basically make sure that they really get to the top, not just in the art world, but also for people who are outside of it. Um, and that made sense economically, but it also made sense socially. Um, and so I decided to start the company. I think, like I always say, I'm definitely not an entrepreneur in the sense that like, if someone had offered me my job and it was at a company, I would have taken it because I just adore what I do. Um, but the idea didn't exist. So I felt that it was the right thing to do. And, and obviously we're lucky because it's been successful ever since, but I think, you know, my employees have equities and I don't see them as employees in that sense. I think a lot of them are very senior or had companies before and and I just see it more as building up an idea that I really think is valuable for the sector and, and making sure that I do that with people that are amazing along the way as well. Well, that, see, that's an amazing journey um, already. And so obviously, I think one of the things that MD Art Agency prides itself on is the idea of the new model um, in the art world. And so obviously whenever a company comes up with a new disruptive model into an industry, they might have a few problems in the beginning. So did you guys have any of such problems when you began the agency? Yeah, well, I think any traditional, because obviously it's a very traditional sector. So any traditional sector does not like change. I think it, will, it almost goes hand in hand. Um, and also um, my sector, 90% of people in my sector have inherited wealth, so are coming from very wealthy background, which I wasn't. And um, I think the idea that a 25 years old kid uh, tended to change things uh, was seen as usual because I was young, I was a woman, I was not coming from the right background. Um, it was a lot stuck against me to kind of think I could do that. Um, and I think instead of welcoming it, I think um, 
people saw that as a threat. They were just, I think they were taken aback because I don't think they could relate to that young woman. I think I was not relatable because I was so different to them in the way I was thinking. Um, and in the way that my family was not helping me to build this. So I, you know, there was no plan B. That is what I wanted to do. So I think it's always interesting when people cannot relate to who you are, they tend to be sadly um, not very supportive. Um, but things have changed and, you know, I'm super proud. My, we are B Corp, so we're super diverse as a company. I've invested in diverse talents. I have a diverse team. Um, and, and obviously diversity brings amazing ideas and great skills and great brains. And, and we a good example that the fact that I came from the outside means that I could bring kind of new things uh, to the sector. Um, so I think, yeah, it's just, there's a whole range of intimidation tactic and bullying and um, God knows it's endless when you're trying to change the sector. But I don't think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think, again, I think I was, I never cared about being my own boss or entrepreneur or anything. I just cared about the idea and I think the idea had to be executed. So I was not on that wavelength. I think for me, I just wanted to see that the idea worked. Um, so that was not going to be something that would uh, kind of get in the way. Yeah, I think, I mean, like many times um, when the odds are stacked against you and you fight your way through it is what great things are born out of. And that only happens when you're passionate about the idea and not like other materialistic stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, so, um, I mean, uh, you've already delved into this a bit, but like, were there any um, big challenges, any point where you thought that, okay, maybe this is not worth it? Yeah, I think the... The early years are definitely a place where you can have an amazing news followed by a very difficult news within five minutes difference. And I remember that in January 2018, um, all our clients paid late for some unknown reasons. So they just all delayed their payments, um, and which put us in a really bad position financially. So I couldn't even afford to take the tube. Um, I was in New York at the time because we were launching an exhibition. And then was in so that was the start of the month at the end of the month everyone paid um which was overdue for some of them for weeks and months and and then i got the full 30 under 30 um on that same time and then we get loads of press with it so i feel that the, the early years are just constant highs and lows and i think the heart is kind of used to a lot of dramatic periods. um I am lucky, and I must say, if, if anyone is at that stage, to give a bit of hope, that it's amazing how when a business grows, you think that things align so much more. Um, I don't have highs and lows in the same way at all. In fact, I rarely have the lows I used to have. Um, they'll be bluffed and things that are difficult to manage, but you usually have a support system and you can consult into people and, and kind of bring them on board. And, and it's a lot less lonely as well because you've built um, people to kind of do that with you. Um, so it's, it's just so much easier. The challenges are different. There's definitely challenges of growth and establishing the company and all of this, but it, it is so much easier than, than the early years, which are definitely where most people fail and businesses fail. And, and I think just super hard on, on the brain because it is just constant highs and lows. Yeah, yeah I mean, even we at Reshape, I mean, it is our first six months, so as to say, and we, also feel these kinds of highs and lows um, all the time. Um, but yeah, so I think now that it's been five years since you started um, the agency, what, have, what do you feel, uh, where did it take you that you didn't expect it to take you? Whether it's something new that you started or let's say a city or anything. I mean, we've done a lot since I think, um, and I'm sure you've seen, we've done the largest public art painting in the world. We've closed the Sean Mast in France, which has 800 meters, so 18,000 square meters of land and had um, a public art on that. And, and that was on the cover of the Financial Times, uh, which is completely surreal. I think there's been a click where life started being surreal, um, where suddenly you just start doing things and having people trusting you and coming on board in such a fast way because you're so used to have being rejected or, or having such negative answers all the time. There's almost seems to be like a, 
a kind of a trigger that goes to the other side and then suddenly just thinks just goes in your way in your favor like you tend to be the name that's put forward the the name that people want to support and and you just obtain things like in a it, much easier and i think also you know, it sounds silly, but we had a big pitch this morning and, but we can just demonstrate how much we have done. So like, you know, it's, there's so much less at stake because the trust that they have to put in us is very limited because they can check that we have done all of this and we have, and, and, and we're confident that we can do it. And, and I'm less, I think sadly at the start, you also don't know if you can do it. I think it's the answer. And I think I'm at a position now where I know it works, you know, we are profitable for a long time now and, and I can see the company working, that um, you also, you have a different confidence and you have a different ways of obtaining things because you know that what you're doing is right and, and works. And, and there's not much else to say. And I think what I like about this as well is you can be more relaxed and less intense and more humoristic as well and, and build nicer relationship where you so need people at the start, you can't really do that. And I think it comes to my point now where you, yeah, it's just it's a much nicer way to interact. Um, but I think the two things are required to go hand in hand. You can't get from a stage one to stage two that, that way. Yeah, no, I mean, you and I definitely agree. I think that uh, once, the, once you get the ball rolling, basically, there is a lot more that you can do, a lot more opportunities that you see that you might not have seen before. And um, you also have the bandwidth then to explore those opportunities further. I mean, like in the beginning, you might want to try 10 different things, but might have the time or the money to only do one of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's great that the ball got rolling and yeah, it, it's, I've seen some of the work and, uh, even the model, I really do like the model because, uh, I, I always believe that if there's a model that speaks to every, uh, person in the process, so whether it's collectors or brands or artists themselves, right? So MT is like the kind of middle point for all of them, then it's got to work because you've got demand coming from every single side. So I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, so speaking of uh, the model, so if let's say I'm a, I'm a business, um, uh, let's say I'm a brand agency and I want to uh, create an advertisement for, let's say Coca-Cola. So what is the process like? Mm -hmm. So I, I contact you and then I say, hey, I need an artwork for this, this, this. Oh. Yeah, so clients wise, we would have uh, the most common one is uh, for, for my sector is someone who needs art for their homes and mm -hmm. they're just like, I you know, you can, I have X amount of budget and I don't want it to just be decorative. I would like it to be something that's very meaningful. And um, what a lot of people don't know is that you can waste money at 800 pounds or 500 pounds the same way that you can do that at 5,000 pounds. So you could have bought a Banksy print at 800 pounds or you could have bought a, a JR or any of the big guys at really cheap pricing when they were emerging and they are, jobs like ours which knows that these people are rising so you you have ways to enter and and it's not just waiting until the artist is massive it's understanding how to enter at that level as well and and not only having something that's really kind of stunning on your wall but also something that is um you know the right investment as well and then i think the um the second thing will be a city a government a council a real estate developer that will be thinking I just, you know, especially in the current times, I need to make my streets, my square, you know, my park a lot more inspiring because people need that. And I want people to kind of walk around the city and, and go to the restaurants when they reopen and all those things. And I need to drive the traffic there. And art does that really well. It kind of inspires people, it makes them feel happier and it kind of helps on, on that basis as well. Um, so that's, that will be on, on that basis. Then you have, Brands like you say, Coca-Cola or um, advertising agencies, what we do with this is the matchmaking. Same with cities and collectors, it's all about matchmaking. If my artists care about sustainability, I'm not going to match them to a you know, shell or turtle, like that would be stupid. So we go, okay, who are you brand wise? What's your values? What's, what do you actually want to communicate? And, and in what way? Is that a retail activation? Is that a campaign? Is that, what is, what is the way you're going to go about it? And then we go and source the talent that actually makes sense in that context. Um, I think the reason that people also go with us is because, you know, I mentioned the Financial Times, but we've been on the cover of that paper a few times, same with BBC and Garden. And I think usually when we do something, 
things, there's a level of press coverage and social media engagement that occurs, which means that you are, um, you're not only just working with an artist, but you're also doing a full communication campaign, which I think a lot of people are also very excited about. Um, press, it's anything from, I want to feature the artist, to I want to interview the artist, to I want to do a cool partnership on social media, and that is um, different for every single one of them. So I think what I like about my job is I have to constantly make sure how do I make people who think differently collaborate, which I've always loved. It's like, I mean, that's really the thing I most struggle with my past job is as a gallerist, you only encounter wealthy people who talk to wealthy people. And in my job, I encounter all types. If you have a you know, console, they are not, they're not very wealthy and they need to do the right thing for their communities, you know? And same with the advertising world, they think very differently. And so I get to learn about people in a very different way. I get to learn about people who think differently constantly and I get to make sure that they dialogue and collaborate better because we understand that and and we use the art of our arts as a tool. Um, and of course, I think we get to empower artists who we think are incredible and and get to kind of have them along the way as well, which is amazing. So I think, yeah, I mean, when you say empower artists, so when I was uh, scrolling through your website, it said that if, if I am an artist, I can apply to be um, an empty artist, I think it was called. And, yeah. uh, I think so that might have a few difficult decisions, right? Because like when you've got, let's say, a lot of applications coming in and then you've yeah. got to say that, okay, like, you know, you, you, you're not there, you're not quite there yet to some of them. Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely, we have a selection committee. So if you go on uh, the About Us and Who Are We, then you can see who selects the artists and that's conducted by my colleague Lise. Um, I, on purpose, didn't want to be the one responsible for the selection because I wanted to be on the final interviews of the team, not at the start, because otherwise you just end up um, going to people that you know more than the most talented ones. And I wanted an open application process, and that was really important to me. Um, I think, you know, because we finance our artists monthly and really put all their support, we really can't do that for many people. And, and we really need um, the top ones, the ones who have the, who are the most ambitious, the most talented, the most driven. Um, and, and I think most people um, don't have that. And I think it's, it's harsh to kind of say this, but I feel like, you know, it's actually, and people always ask us like, is it difficult as a decision? It's not really because the level of sacrifices that it comes to actually do that and do that well is so high that you have such a remaining few that will have that personality who acknowledge the level of that they're going to have to make and sacrifices as well and that's the ones that I'm looking for that's the resilience I'm looking for and most people um, I think would like the idea of being a successful artist but there's a difference between liking the idea and actually saying I'm committing to kind of deliver the work in yeah I mean yeah that's I, I've seen that um even with the um like so obviously it's uh, difficult making sure that the artists, like getting on board some of them and then saying no to some of them because amongst the people that you say no to, a lot of them are also struggling. Um, but yeah, I guess, it, of course, it is important to have the ones that are going to be there for the future as well as since we, like overall, the idea of them is as um, investments. But you do have something. So I, I saw uh, something called the Young Collectors Program, I think, and then you've yeah. got like, ambassadors for that so is that for like for example if i if i want to like start a art collection so would i mean because i have like maybe 50 pounds yeah in my account yeah i think like it's the the idea with this was very much the fact that again i when i first um kind of managed a gallery for my first boss who had discovered banksy and jr and connor and a lot of them um, I saw that you could have bought all of this for very little. And obviously little is relative, but we were talking a few hundred pounds uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And whereas now obviously it's worth millions, you know? Um, so I felt that like, it's such an insider network that I, you know, I want people to enjoy that ride. I'm someone that's highly competitive and like the ride of things. I like working with the top people, trying to be at my best, like very kind of, athletic in the sense of the way I run my business. And I would want everyone to have the same starting block to be informed that 
like you could be working with top people and this is what the starting block is basically kind of you know starting and and you know i think when i looked at demographics 15 percent of, of women were actually buyers which is crazy because so many women now would achieve tons and the diversity of the people who were buyers were very limited it was basically like old white male uh, that was basically it and and i knew and i know in my network a lot of people who are very achieving who do not kind of don't have that profile but they're just not partially feeling that this is their world. Um, and I think the fact that I didn't come from a worse background and I talked about things that way, I think I attracted people who were different and who understood that maybe it was their world as well. And, and it's just really nice. I think we have a great diversity of buyers. Um, and, and I do have, you know, the very successful elder white male, you know, and, and you can see with some of my investors, they will definitely match our profile. But I'm very proud that I also have the 20s and the like, you know, people from different countries, different cultures, different belief. And, and that's nice because, again, it's important for me that everyone gets to mix and everyone gets to, um, um, to kind of take part in that. And, and it is fun. It's like when you bet on something and, and it goes really well. It's, it's a nice feeling to kind of go through the journey of an artist that is becoming bigger and bigger and to kind of, you know, to kind of being um, part of that journey in the start. Yeah, no, definitely. I have this um, uncle who bought a uh, painting from uh, an Indian designer when, like, about 15 years ago. And the, the, the designer's become um, really famous now. Um, his name is, I mean, he's not really famous globally, but really famous in India. And obviously, the guy keeps talking about the entire journey because he's just had that one painting, but he's followed the designer through the years. And now that painting just tells so many more stories than just the fact that he bought it. Um, and I, I definitely think that, yeah, the, the idea was um, speaking to the youth is really important in today's world because firstly, we are becoming a younger population every day and the young people are actually influencing most of what happens in the world. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, move on to our next and final segment. It's, it's the rapid fire. So the way that it works is I'm just going to, I'll ease into it with a few easy questions and then maybe um, a few difficult ones. So it's just quick question, one word answers, and you have like five seconds to answer. Yeah. So should we start? Yeah. All right. iPad or notebook? Notebook. All right. Favorite social media platform? Instagram. <laughs> Which hobby of yours did MT Art Agency kill? Which hobby of mine, what, sorry? Which hobby of yours was killed by your company, if any? Was killed by the company, in what way? Is represented like, by it? No, no, no. For I don't understand the example, question, I think. Um, when I, uh, like when we started Reshape Go, I had to cut down on swimming because of the amount of extra time that this company took. So did I you have see. anything like that? Yeah. I think I'm lucky that my hobby is also my job. So I think for me, it just became one place. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, have, what is the weirdest place from where you have worked? Um, weirdest place from where I've bought or I've, I've traveled to? Where you, from where you have worked, worked. Like for example, gone walk, on a cliff. I worked. Um, I've been a waitress at Costa Coffee when I was a BBC intern. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, what is the biggest risk you've taken? I think so many. I think, um, yeah, I don't think there's one. I think selling the company, but also becoming a man, having a company. I think, you know, there's so many risks, I think, in tell every day. All right, cool. So that's our rapid fire segment. And yeah, that concludes our final segment. And we'd really like to thank you for giving us your time and being an absolutely great guest. Uh, we did learn a lot today. Uh, for our audience, which is our future audience, is there a motivational quote or learning you'd like to leave them with from your experience? Yeah, I, my, my one, I can only give the ones that I use all the time, but it's just to live the life of your imagination because I've imagined most things I'm living today. So I think it's just trusting this a bit more that you can come up with the right concept yourself. I, I, I absolutely love that quote. In fact, when we do put up the video, we'll put that as the description. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on board.